गाइस माय नेम इज अंकुश कौरव एंड आई वेलकम यू टू कॉन टू सीरीज इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट रेस्टफुल वेब सर्विस कॉन्सेप्ट्स सो व्हाट इज अ रेस्टफुल एपीआई और सिंपली अ रेस्टफुल वेब सर्विस इफ अ सॉफ्टवेयर एप्लीकेशन exposes its data to other software applications and while doing so if it follows all guidelines as specified in rest then that application is known as a restful web service application or simply a rest based application guys whatever apis or uris a rest based application provides using which other applications can access or modify its data are informally known as rest apis so the big question is how do we develop such an application which gives other applications an ability to access or modify its data in a super easy and effective manner and here comes the rest guidelines into the picture rest stands for representation state transfer it's basically a set of guidelines which describes the overall architecture of such an application so let me very quickly introduce all rest guidelines to you and later in the immediate next tutorial we going to use the same guidelines to develop a fully working restful web service application all right let's start rest says in a client and a server architecture whatever data or functionality is kept at the server application which a client can access or modify is known as a resource so they can be one two hundreds thousands or any number of resources present at the server application which a client has an access to a client can access or modify any of the resources present at the server application using its uri so here is how it works client sends a request to the server to access a resource using its uri as provided by the server and server sends a response back to the client the response which the client receives is actually the representation of the requested resource means it's actually the copy of the requested resource in any of the specific formats like xml json html csv pdf etc etc as requested by the client in addition to the representation of requested resource the response also contains some additional information which describes every basic characteristic of this representation like its format its size or any other similar information so upon receiving the response just by analyzing this additional information client will come to know about all basic information which it may require while processing the representation of requested resource received in that response guys according to rest guidelines once a client receives the response you know the representation of requested resource as well as the additional information which describes it with all this information in that response client should be able to modify or even delete the corresponding resource which is present at the server if it wants to between client and server any number of intermediaries can be installed which may help to address concerns like response caching server security load balancing etc etc for example a machine can be installed near server with a firewall software so every client request to the server is supposed to pass through this machine and this machine's responsibility is to stop every insecure or malicious request reaching the server in the similar ways a caching server can be installed near client whose job is to save every response sent to the client before the response which is the client so that next time when the client requests for the same resource for which the response is already saved in the caching server the request 
will be served from this caching server only and not from the actual server application so this way the request need not to travel all through till the server to fetch the response this saves a lot of time and network resources guys rest says every request made by the client should be treated as a new request and should carry all information with it which is required by the server to send the desired response guys one last important guideline before i wind up this tutorial in every resource representation which is sent to the client server application should include the uris or links of all relevant resources which a client may be required to visit after he goes through that representation guys this is one of the most important guidelines as shared in rest if you have any concern regarding this don't hesitate to bring all those to me through emails or through the comments all right in the next tutorial we will learn how to develop a fully working restful web service application using all the guidelines as learned in this tutorial guys a big thank you for learning spring mvc with me if you have any feedback or comments please provide them below the video or simply write to me on this email id for all of your queries please hit the like button if you really liked it and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel gone to series and i'm going to catch you in the next part of this tutorial